Hi, hi everyone. Uh, we are done with the proof of the Mordove theorem. We've been uh, building up to this for so long. That it's kind of sad to be done with the proof, but um, but it's done. Uh, so the Mordove theorem, <clears throat> what we proved is actually over Q, but just one piece over Q we did. We proved the, the weak Mordove theorem uh, over number fields. Uh, so that was over any number field. Uh, we proved the descent theorem. The descent theorem is for abelian groups. Uh, so for any, that works with the Mordove group with a weak Mordove over any number field. And uh, height, we just proved that the height over Q is a height. <clears throat> okay. But you can, um, you can similarly prove that the heights over a number of fields also satisfy the properties that we needed for the descent theorem. Um, I'm not going to do that, but we're going to build also what's called the canonical height, which you can also build over um, over number fields, and with that uh, also prove the Mordove theorem over a number field. <clears throat> In any case, uh, what the Mordove theorem implies through the classification of um, of um, finitely generated abelian groups is that, for example, over Q, the group of rational points on an elliptic curve is isomorphic to a sum, a direct sum of uh, a torsion subgroup. So there's this we're going to call the torsion subgroup. And uh, that torsion subgroup, if this is finitely generated, that torsion subgroup has to be a finite group. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, these other parts, which is sort of like the um, the number of independent generators of infinite order, and this part is called the free part. I'm putting free part in quotes um, because if you have a point of infinite order, if you add a point of finite order, that point again has infinite order, so there is no free part. There is no subgroup that you can define um, that is the free part. Uh, the free part, for example, you could define it to be um, the rational points modulo torsion, that is a free uh, abelian group. So you could define it that way if you want, but in any case, um, what is well defined is the rank, is the Z rank of the elliptic curve. Uh, so here is uh, the rank. So that part is called the rank of uh, EQ, uh, that depends, we could, we could base extend, we could change the, the base field of this elliptic curve, this over Q, we could change it to Q adjoint I, but now the rank would change, the torsion subgroup would change. So you have, to, it's not just the rank of E, you have to specify what field you're talking about. So um, now that we know that there is such a decomposition, we want to understand both pieces. We want to understand uh, how do you, uh, what are the possibilities for the torsion subgroup and what are the possibilities for the rank? Um, and we're going to get very two different answers. For the torsion subgroup, we're going to have a complete classification. For the rank, basically everything is open. Every question you might ask is open. Uh, what ranks are possible? Can the rank be arbitrarily large? Uh, we don't know. Uh, the largest rank known is 28 by an example of, um, of L keys. And, uh, we don't know if there are larger ranks than that or if the rank can be arbitrarily large. Anyway, today we're going to start uh, with uh, the torsion. So we're going to analyze the, the torsion uh, subgroup and compute it uh, using some uh, a fairly efficient algorithm. And then we're going to start talking about canonical heights, which is a, a version 2.0 of the height we've defined last time. Um, but the canonical heights are actually going to be related to the free part. We're going to use canonical heights to um, to be able to show independence, z independence of uh, of rational points. Okay, which is uh, which is important. All right, so uh, let me get started um, right away. What we can say is that uh, our results from uh, chapter seven, in particular. Uh, the result uh, in chapter 7, 3.4, implies uh, the following theorem uh, about torsion. So uh, let K be a number field.
and e over k an elliptic curve um, with uh, given by uh, uh, Weierstrass equation uh, such that uh, the AIs uh, all the uh, coefficients of the value stress equation are integers and let p uh, in uh, k in e over k uh, be a point of finite order m okay then uh, what we can do is for every prime for every place uh, of the uh, in particular, for every finite place, places that correspond to uh, prime ideals of K, we can localize at uh, that place or uh, complete at that place. And then uh, we get a complete field, a local field, and we can use our results about, about elliptic curves over local fields to prove the following. Hopefully this uh, result uh, is familiar, uh, that the first thing we proved is that if M is not a power of a prime, uh, uh, yeah, power of a prime, a prime power, then x of p, y of p, r and ok in the ring of integers, okay, uh, which Silverman sometimes calls r, right? Uh, the ring of integers of, of of the number field. Remember that that was true completion by completion. Okay, so if you complete at any prime, so if there is a denominator somewhere, then take a prime that divides that denominator, complete at that prime, and uh, there, that's impossible because we know that over a local field, if m was not a power of a prime, a prime power, then the coordinates were integral. They were integral in the completion, so there is no denominators at that prime uh, in the in the uh, in the completion. And the only way that there could be uh, primes in the denominator of a of a coordinate was that um, if m is a power of a prime, uh, then uh, for all places, finite places. So places that are coming from um, from primes, uh, let r nu be uh, the greatest integer. The valuation, the order of uh, of p at nu divided by p to the n minus p to the n minus one. Uh, then. Uh, what we know is that the order at nu of the x coordinate is bigger or equal to minus two r nu, and the order of vanishing of the y coordinate is at least uh, minus three r nu. Okay. In particular, uh, x of p and y of p are integral if the order of vanishing of p at nu is zero. Okay, so that what that says is that um, if you have a place nu that does not divide p, where the p is the order of the point, the point is of order p, of order p squared, and so on, but this is another prime above another prime, not P, then immediately uh, there cannot be denominator. So what it is saying is that, for example, if there are denominators in the coordinates of X and Y for a torsion point and the points of order P, then the denominators have to be, um, the factorization of the denominator has to be just primes dividing P. Okay, there cannot be primes dividing Q for some other q, uh, from other prime q. Uh, but in particular, uh, for what we saw that for q itself, 
the only possibility is that the value stress equation uh, has a point of order two uh, with a or with a denominator of x being four and a denominator of y being eight. And we saw an example of that uh, when we were talking about local fields. However, uh, you can um, prove the following corollary of of this theorem that if you are talking about elliptic curves in short value stress form, every torsion point has integral points. This is called the Nagel uh, Lutz theorem, um, which uh, I believe that it was proved independently by Nagel and Lutz because it is not a collaboration. It's one of those things that it was in the air that this theorem was uh, about to be proved and two different people proved it. Um, uh, so let E over Q now uh, be an elliptic curve given by a short value stress equation. This can also be proved over number of fields, but let's just do it over Q um, and A and B be integers. Um, then, um, uh, and suppose uh, P is a uh, non-zero torsion point. Then two things. A, um, the coordinates are integers. So it has to be that both of them are integral, uh, both coordinates, regardless if M is a two torsion point or not. And B, uh, either uh, 2P is O, or, so if it is not a two torsion point, uh, then the Y coordinate divides the quantity 4a cubed plus 27b squared. Okay, so this is the second part. Well, the, the fact that they are all integer coordinates and the second part in particular gives you a criterion to find all the torsion points on an elliptic curve. Let me give you an example first before we go into the proof of this. So, um, for example, uh, let uh, E be the elliptic curve Y squared equals X cubed minus two. Um, what you need to do is first compute the two torsion. Uh, so uh, how about uh, two torsion defined over Q? Well, the two torsion, if you've done well, one of the homework problems, the two torsion for a short value stress equation are the points a root of the polynomial in x comma zero, okay? But uh, x cubed minus two equals zero is irreducible over q, uh, so there is no two torsion over q, okay? And for the rest of the torsion, uh, so now if P is not in the two torsion, uh, then what I know is that the Y coordinate the squared has to divide uh, 4A cubed plus 27B squared, uh, but that quantity is um, just 27 times four. A is zero, so this is uh, 27 times four. And now, um, so if y squared divides this, and y is an integer, okay, um, this is, whoops, um, uh, this is an integer, and it divides 27 times four, then you can just compute what is the list of all the integers, uh, all the squares that divide 27 times four, and that tells you then that y must be uh, one of, plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three, or plus minus six. And, um, and that would say then that X cubed 
is uh, y squared minus two would belong to, uh, well, either three, six, 11, or 38, right? Um, did I do that right? Uh, So we were square plus two plus two there, yeah, right. Uh, but these are not uh, no cubes. Uh, so the but the intersection uh, with cubes is empty. Uh, so there you go. So there is no uh, no torsion at all. Okay, uh, so that tells me then that for this elliptic curve, uh, the torsion subgroup is just uh, one point, uh, is just the zero point. All right. Um, okay, so uh, let me prove the, the Nagel Lutz theorem. Then, sorry, can I ask a quick question before we move on? Yeah, uh, I might be misremembering exactly what the results said, but I remember results something like this that said that that um, we would have integral that that torsion points would be integral except for possibly two torsion points, which could have um, which could have denominator. Does, is this theorem saying something? Other than that, am I misremembering that result? No, you're, you're remembering correctly, but that was for long bias stress equations. Mm -hmm. And we saw an example of an, of an elliptic curve over Q with integer coefficients that had a point that was something like one fourth and one eighth or something where the coordinates of the two torsion points, but that point lived in a, in a long bias stress equation. So what this is saying is that if you put your equation in short bias stress equation, then all the torsion points have to have integral coordinates. Okay. Okay. And we'll see, we'll see in the proof that that is, uh, that's the case. And we're going to use that. Um, what you're, what you're remembering is just this, uh, theorem specified for Q, um, when, um, over Q, uh, recall that over Q, uh, what happens with our new? Um, our new would just be um, uh, what is the the order of vanishing of at Q of the order of vanishing at Q of p divided by p to the n minus p to the n minus one, right? Uh, well, first uh, we have that if Q is not p. Uh, probably like this. This is zero if Q is not P, right? Because if it was, um, uh, if it if it's um, Q is not P, then the order of vanishing at Q of P is zero, right? Um, or the, how many multiples of Q are there that divide P? If Q is not P, then you get zero. And then if um, if P is Q. Uh, and they are uh, bigger than two, then uh, you have one divided by something that is bigger than two. So the, uh, the greatest integer below it is zero. And if P is two and N is one, uh, then, uh, so th this case is for any, for any N. And if P is two and N is one, then you do have a one. Okay. Okay. So this says that in long value stress equations, uh, notice that this is long value stress equations. In long value stress equations, you could have uh, what this says is that the order of vanishing is uh, greater than minus two, and the order of vanishing of the y coordinate is greater than minus three at two. So that you could have a four in the denominator and a three in the denominator of the y coordinate. 
And that's what we saw that does happen in a long value stress equation, it can happen. Okay. Uh, but the Nagel Lutz theorem says that in short value stress equations, that doesn't happen. And let me show you why. Um, so uh, the proof of Nagel Lutz, it's actually not that difficult now that we've proved quite a bit of things. So first, um, if M equals to two, if the if it is a two torsion point, then we know that y of uh, p is zero. The y coordinate has to be zero. You can um, that explanation. Uh, this was a, a homework problem, but the, the explanation is that uh, well, you have a short value stress equation, so it is looking something like this. And uh, if it is of um, of two torsion then the tangent line has to be at the point it has to be that is a vertical line the tangent line at that point uh, so that the point of intersection of it with itself is the point at infinity so the point has to be here so the y coordinate has to be zero okay you can you can work that out uh, so the y coordinate is zero and uh therefore uh x is a root of uh, a cubic, so x cubed plus ax plus b equals zero um, with uh, coefficients in, in the integers, and therefore uh, x, if it is in q, um, if x is in q, uh, then x is in uh, z. At any rate, so what this actually says is that x of p, um, even if it is not a q number, is an integral uh, number. Oops, um, it's in, uh, let's say, um, how to say, it's in, it's an, it's an, in, uh, it's a, uh, an integer, in the algebraic closure of Q, okay? Um, so it's an integral number, it's an algebraic integer. Because it is uh, a, a root of a monic polynomial with integer coefficients, okay? Uh, so this says that uh, if it's in Q, then X is, in, uh, is an algebraic integer and also in Q, but those are the integers, and therefore you get uh, that X would be an integral coordinate. Okay, so I don't need uh, very special machinery to show that the two torsion uh, points on an elliptic curve in short value stress equation um, uh, have integral coefficients. Okay, so this is very important. This is for short via stress equations. Let's put highlight it. Okay. So uh, that's for the two torsion. So what about uh, for the rest? So now assume that two uh, P is not O. Okay, it's not a point of two torsion, and um, therefore uh, the y coordinate is uh, non-zero. Uh, then, uh, by uh, oh, I'm sorry, I I didn't I didn't complete the proof of a. That's just saying that the the two torsion has integer coefficients. Uh, okay, so if this shows that if P is in the two torsion uh, and it is defined over Q, then P, um, X of P, Y of P are integers. Uh, so now if M is bigger than two, uh, it follows, uh, it follows, 
uh, from uh, the theorem at the beginning of the talk uh, that um, that r nu is zero in all cases, and um, and therefore the coordinates are integral. Okay. So this shows that all the portion points have integer uh, integer coordinates. So let's see what happens with the um, with the second part, which is the condition on the uh, the y the square of the y coordinate dividing that sort of polynomial that has to do with the discriminant. So now for b, assume that uh, the point is not of two torsion. So uh, the y coordinate is non-zero, and uh, then uh, by part A, we know that the point x, the point y, and the point 2p, all of them have uh, coordinates that are integers. 2p is not zero, so it is also a torsion point. So 2p also has uh, integer coefficients. Okay, now, uh, what is the duplication formula? The duplication formula uh, tells me that X of 2P is phi of XP divided by four psi of XP, uh, where uh, phi of x is x to the 4 minus 2ax squared minus 8bx plus a squared. And uh, psi of x is x cubed plus ax plus b. These, by the way, are the first um, division polynomials. And there is a, if you go to Silverman and do a, a search in the index for division polynomials, this is actually a very, very useful tool in general, um, which I haven't talked about. But if you do that homework problem in the in the book, you learn about division polynomials, and this is something very useful. Okay. And uh, it turns out, so this is a lemma I have improved. But it turns out that um, the phi and the psi, you can do sort of like a bazoo's algorithm to show that um, the following equation holds that this times phi uh, minus 3x cubed minus 5ax uh, minus 27b times psi is exactly 4a cubed plus 27b squared. Okay, I'm going to call these polynomials. These polynomials are going to be f of x and g of x. Okay, and uh, what do we do now? Um, so it turns out that, uh, by the way, um, that psi of xp is in fact uh, the y coordinate uh, is squared. Uh, so so it turns out. So I'm going to use two things. First of all, from the um, from the duplication formula, phi of x of p is x of two p uh, times uh, four psi of xp. And another fact is that uh, psi of xp turns out to be the square of y. And now if you plug in these things into the previous equation, so uh, plug in, uh, what do we get? Uh, we get from the first, from this, plug in this in here, you see I'm going to have a common factor of, of psi of xp because psi of xp is going to divide this polynomial and this polynomial, and psi of xp is actually uh, y squared. 
So what I get is the following equation uh, that y e squared times four times f of x of p uh, times x of 2p minus g of x of p is for a cube plus 27b squared. Okay. And now we're almost there because this is all integers. Uh, this is an equation of integers. And um, therefore, uh, this integer, y squared, divides this integer. And that's what we wanted to prove. Okay. And that's, um, that's an extremely useful criterion because uh, 4a cubed plus 27b squared will have a number of uh, squares that can divide it. And then that gives you a finite list of what the y coordinate can be. And then you can check uh, what y coordinates can happen, see if there is a matching x coordinate for those y coordinates. And if so, is that a point of finite order? It doesn't have to be. Okay, it doesn't say that uh, the, the condition is not an if and only if statement. Even if you find a match, an X coordinate that matches your Y coordinate in the equation, you still have to check whether that point is a finite order or not. Um, but it gives you a finite, uh, a finite algorithm to compute torsion points. Okay. So just to, sorry if I'm just stating what you said one more time, but what yep. this gives us is a, like an algorithm to find torsion points over Q with a short bias form yep. is yep. Yep. find the two torsion points, which are there are three at most three, not including the the zero, uh, the zero point. Then uh, calculate this basically like a stripped uh, discriminant. I think yep. um, find all of the possible squares. Um, or all possible numbers that would that would divide that are squares that divide that and then then find corresponding x coordinates or possible x coordinates and then test that set of possible torsion points exactly yeah okay. so that that's right. sort of like what i i tried to illustrate in this example that these are the steps that you would follow um in this case i found no points so uh, in this case uh, there was nothing here, and therefore I was done. There could be something there. I don't know. You find that you know one comma two works. Uh, the criterion doesn't say uh, it's just a then. It's not an if and only if. So just because you have a point with integer coordinates, that doesn't mean that this is a um, a torsion point. Uh, just because you have a point whose y coordinate divides uh, that. That doesn't mean it is a torsion point. It just means it really matches that condition. What this just says is that if there are torsion points, these conditions are um, matched. Okay. And, and again, as I said, it's fairly efficient. Uh, I mean, it's fairly efficient that the problem is that the discriminant itself grows. It's insane. And like it, it, this quantity can grow very, it's a cube essentially. Um, so it grows really fast and there can be a ton of divisors, but we saw another way of computing torsion, which was that injection that, uh, that map that gave us that the M torsion, uh, if you have a prime of good reduction, the M torsion injects into the number of points, uh, modulo P into the, the, uh, the group of points modulo P and that criterion is actually uh, even better in some cases. So the combination of this and that criterion gives you a very good way to compute torsion. All right. So uh, let me just now state um, for the record uh, the the full classification of uh, of torsion. So uh, this was a conjecture. So this is a theorem of uh, Barry Maser. 
uh, that this was proved, I believe, in something like the uh, in seventy seven. Uh, this was a conjecture, um, which apparently um, Levi had conjecture. Um, so it was conjectured by a mathematician called uh, by the last name of Levi, uh, and then uh, Og reconjectured uh, this list that I'm going to write. Um, uh, probably not not realizing that Levi had already conjectured such a list. And then Maser proved the conjecture of what torsion subgroups can happen over Q. It turns out that not just every finite abelian group can happen. We know that it's impossible, first of all, because we know that, for example, the P torsion has to be at most is as a subgroup of Z mod P cross Z mod P. So you can imagine what sort of like bicyclic groups can happen. Uh, and then it turns out that the list of possible torsion subgroups is uh, a list of uh, 15 groups. It can be cyclic of order n with n up to 10 or 12, but there are no uh, torsion subgroups over Q of order 11. They do happen over other number fields, but not over Q. Or it can be bicyclic. Um, with uh, M up to four, and that's it. Okay, um, another thing we saw that, imp that implies a, a constraint on what subgroups you can have is that we saw that you cannot have full three torsion or full P torsion for P bigger than two over Q, because remember that the V pairing uh, so recall that the existence of the Ve pairing implied that if uh, if the M torsion is contained in an elliptic curve or a number field, then uh, the M roots of unity are contained in K. So over Q, you can only have the two torsion fully defined over uh, over Q. So that's why there is no Z mod three cross Z mod three defined over Q. Okay. And the other uh, the other fact that is of interest here is that um, every subgroup appears for infinitely many different J invariants over Q. Every uh, subgroup. Uh, in uh, Mazur's list uh, occurs for infinitely many uh, J invariants over Q. So there are infinitely many non isomorphic elliptic curves with any of these isomorphisms for a torsion subgroup. So, for example, you might want to and not only that, not only infinitely many J invariants, they are very neatly organized into one parameter families. So, uh, for instance, uh, the elliptic curves with a point of order seven. So, elliptic curves over Q with um, torsion subgroup Z mod seven Z. Um, uh, belong to uh, one parameter family uh, as follows. It's the family uh, y square plus uh, one plus d minus d square x y uh, plus d square minus d cubed uh, y equals x cubed plus uh, d squared minus d cubed x squared with uh, p the point zero zero uh, that is the point of order seven a point of order seven is given by zero zero uh, with d in q uh, such that uh, the delta is non-zero, 
So if you compute the discriminant, there's only going to be finitely many values of D where this doesn't work. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, I believe that uh, all, all values of D work here. I, I believe the exceptions are not in Q. So uh, I believe for any rational number D, probably not D equal to zero. Yeah, yeah, so probably for D non-zero. Anyway, just have to make sure that the delta is non-zero in this case. So, uh, and you can find uh, tables, for example, in my little uh, book on, on elliptic curves. In one of the appendices, there is a table there with all the parameterizations of elliptic curves with a given torsion subgroup, okay? And this is uh, why this, how do you get to something like this? This is another topic that is beyond the scope of this course. But um, this, uh, this happens because um, we know how to parameterize such things using modular curves. So there is another algebraic structure, which is a curve, but it's a curve whose uh, points parameterize elliptic curves that are certain group structure um, with a certain torsion structure. And uh, in particular, this is a model for uh, elliptic curves with one point of order seven. So it's a point of what we call X one of seven, um, which is uh, the curve that would parameterize elliptic curves with um, um, with the modular curve that parameterizes, parameterizes elliptic curve that have one rational point of order seven, X one of seven. Um, and you can do X one of 12, X one of five. And if you look at X one of 11, it turns out that that is a modular curve that has no rational points that correspond to elliptic curves over Q um, versus X1 of seven that has infinitely many points. It's like you know, zero curve itself that has infinitely many points that correspond to elliptic curves with that structure. So anyway, that leads to the study of, um, of, of modular curves. And if you want to learn more about modular curves, I suggest uh, a reference, which I really like, it's Tom Weston's, uh, I believe um, it's called the modular uh, curves, uh, X naught of 11 and X one of 11, I think, um, something like that. Um, so Weston's paper, that, that is a, a very nice survey and introduction to modular curves. And it, it explains why there are no points of order 11 over Q. Um, uh, it might be the modular curve X1 of 11, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. And then the next video, we'll start with uh, canonical heights. Very good.